What you know about black holes could be wrong, and that's not your fault. These galactic monsters take physics to the extreme, and that is incredibly difficult to try explain in just a single image or a one sentence explainer. So here is your black hole crash course, everything you need to know about the cosmic monster you'll hopefully never meet. First, we have to break down one of the biggest misconceptions. Black holes don't suck. They aren't the vacuum cleaners of the universe, rather, like other big things, their mass bends space and time, and it creates something called a gravitational well. And we have to remember, this is happening on all sides of a sphere. Black holes, just like stars, are round. Inside, at the bottom of these wells, we theorize that matter and energy is condensed into a single incredibly dense point, a singularity. We'll come back to this later. For now, I want to try to redeem this bad reputation they seem to have picked up, and that is that they will devour anything that comes close to them. This just is not true. What surprises a lot of people is that things can orbit around black holes fairly stably for incredibly long periods of time. Zooming out from the singularity, there is a radius we often call the edge, the boundary, where the pull of gravity is stronger than the speed of light. You'll know this well as the event horizon. Anything that passes this point is a goner. Outwards from this point though, it is not all bad news. Light particles can orbit pretty close in something called a photon sphere. And a little further away, we see matter, like you and me, stuck in orbit for long periods of time. But there are consequences for matter getting this close. The force of gravity and the rotation of these black holes accelerates matter to relativistic speeds in spectacular accretion disks. We can break all of this down by trying to picture a two-dimensional gravitational well. What we see at the bottom is our singularity. That is where all of the mass exists. And as we travel further up this gravitational well, we get those different orbits. So for here, we have the event horizon. A little further up, we have the photon sphere. And just a bit above that, we have our first stable orbits and where those relativistic disks start. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope unveiled our first ever photo of a black hole. Sitting at the center of M87, this supermassive black hole is six and a half billion times the mass of our sun. The ring we see is a cloud of incredibly hot dust and gas orbiting around the large accretion disk. For now, images like this are the closest we'll get to ever truly seeing a black hole. Now, something I didn't appreciate for years is that black holes aren't large. I mean, don't get me wrong, they are massive, but they aren't especially large. Black holes fundamentally are a single point. We don't know if a true singularity actually exists, but we do think it gets pretty close. This point is smaller than anything else you can imagine. With this in mind, the event horizons aren't actually that far away from the singularity. Let's take our very own supermassive black hole here in the Milky Way, Sagittarius A star. This amazing phenomenon sits just 25,000 light years away in the center of our galaxy. Using the orbits of nearby stars, we've estimated its mass to be 4.1 million times the mass of our sun. With a mass that heavy, you might expect the event horizon to be mighty vast. Well, you might be surprised. Its radius is just 17 times bigger than our sun, meaning the entire supermassive black hole up to the event horizon would fit comfortably inside Mercury's orbit. The biggest black hole by far we have ever found is known as S50014 plus 81. That's not a catchy name, but it's one you might want to remember. This is a distant hyperluminous quasar, and we've estimated its mass to be 40 billion times that of the sun. That is truly massive, and it's the point where I start to get a little bit uncomfortable. If we put that in the center of our solar system, the event horizon edge is 37 times further away than Pluto. That is the type of black hole that makes me a little bit nervous. So let's zoom it back down to something a little less scary, things we call stellar mass black holes. These are the remnants of massive stars, which come to the end of their fusion lives and can no longer support their weight. 
in massive stars like this, gravity really takes over and everything starts to fall back in on itself. This type of stellar death is actually quite common. Just here in our galaxy alone, we estimate that there are over 100 million stellar mass black holes just lurking in the dark. Before we wrap up this round of black hole facts, I want to jump back to something I said at the beginning, that black holes really are just a single point in space and time, that singularity at the center of them. What's amazing is we can start to see them not only as objects like stars, but instead as particles. Now, I know this sounds kind of bizarre, right? How could they be a particle? And that is because they kind of act like one, or at least they do in computer simulations. Now this research is really incredible and even I have trouble wrapping my head around it. So let me try and explain. When physicists simulated a specific type of theoretical black hole and some other particles around it, they found that the black holes could act like they were in superpositions when those particles got close to them. So black holes, they're weird and they're wonderful. And the more we start to learn about them and how they interact with things like the centers of galaxies, we start to appreciate that without them, our universe would not quite be the same.